Now we're going to look at how to derive an actual derivative function using a very simple example. We're going to use the function f of x equals x squared, which is this parabola right here. So we need to come up with an f of x plus h and an f of x for our two x values. So we have two x values, x and x plus a little bit more. Because we want, and then we want to find out what happens as that little bit more, that h that we add to x, gets closer and closer to zero, so that these two points get closer and closer together. That's the goal. So when h is zero, then we have two points that are exactly the same, and we get the tangent line. So when x, um, when our function is x squared, then if we have an our x value is just x, then our y value is x squared. So when our x value is x plus h, our y value is x plus h squared, because the function says to square whatever that input value is in the function. So our two points are x, x squared, that's our one, a one set of x and y values. Our other set of x and y values are x plus h and x plus h squared. So now I'm going to set up my limit, uh, my derivative function formula, and I'm going to substitute in x plus h squared for this y value and x squared for this y value. Because that's the function I'm using, I'm using the function that says to square whatever the x value is. So x, x squared is one set of points, and x plus h and x plus h squared is the other set of coordinates, the, um, the other x and y value. Once again, if I put 0 in for h, I'm going to have x squared minus x squared over x minus x, which is 0 over 0. So I do have to figure out how to handle this with a limit. So what we did before was we did some algebra, and that's what we're going to have to do here. We know that if we expand the binomial x plus h squared, we're going to get x squared plus xh plus xh plus h squared, or x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. That's something we learned when we did our um, binomial theorem unit. So that would be x plus h squared. So we have x plus h squared over x squared, and in the denominator we still have x plus h minus x. If we put 0 in for h here and here and here, we still have x squared minus x squared over x minus x, so we're not done yet. We need to do a little more algebra to simplify and remove the discontinuity. The discontinuity is h. So let's simplify what we have in the numerator. And what you'll notice in the numerator is anything that does not have an h in it subtracts out. I have an x squared minus an x squared in the numerator, and I have an x minus an x in the denominator, so I'm left with 2xh plus h squared all over h. Once again, if I put 0 in, I'm still going to get 0 over 0. But now I notice a common factor. There's a common, I can factor out an h from the expression in the numerator, and I also have an h in the denominator. So I fa if I factor out the common factor of h, so I have h times the quantity 2x plus h, that just assure yourself that that's correct for the numerator. I factored out an h. I have 2x plus h left over in my parentheses, and I have an h in the denominator. So I can divide the h's. That allows me now to substitute 0 into what's left over, 2x plus h. That gives me 2 times x. Now notice I'm not substituting anything for x. I'm substituting for h. So I end up with 2x plus 0. So now what that leaves me with then is f prime of x equals 2x. That is the derivative function for x squared. Now this is not the derivative function for any polynomial, just for this specific polynomial, the polynomial f of x equals x squared. So let's see what that means. Now this is kind of a complicated picture, so I'm going to talk you through it. But I want you to notice this table over here first of all. And maybe I should cover up the graph and just kind of look at the table first, but just kind of ignore the, the graph for the moment. Let's look at the table. So what I have here is some various x values. Now you might think, why did I pick those x values? 
uh, just to have a variety of different places on the graph that we could look at. So I picked x equals negative 2, x equals 0, x equals 1.5, and x equals 0. 0.6. Then I found the y value for each of those x values. So I'm just squaring each of these. So negative 2 squared is 4, 0 squared is 0, 1.5 squared is 2.25, 0. 0.6 squared is 0. 0.36. And you can see that those points are all labeled on the graph. I didn't label the 0. 0, but there's the 0. 0. There's negative 2, 4. There's 1.5, 2.25, and there's 0 0.6, 0 0.36. So those points are all plotted on my graph. The next thing I did then is I used the derivative function to find the derivative or the slope at each x value. So to find the slope when x is negative 2, I use the derivative function. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. So if I look at my point negative 2, 4, and I see the tangent line drawn in here, what this says is that the slope of this tangent line is negative 4. And if you count 1, 2, 3, 4, down 4, and to the right 1, this has um, a rise over run of negative 4 over positive 1, and this has a slope of negative 4. Let's look at the next example. If I have x equals 0 and I put 0 into the derivative function, I get f prime of 0 is 2 times 0, which is 0. So that tells me the slope of f of x at x equals 0 is 0. And that makes sense because 0, 0 is a vertex of the function. So this line right here is the line y equals 0, this orange line. That is the tangent line at the vertex. Now let's look at the third example. And this is the green line here, the green tangent line. Um, and I'm going to underline this point in green. So I'm referring to this point. So everything that has to do, everything that's in green has to do with that point right there. So the y value at 1.5 is 2.25. But the slope is 2 times the x value, 2 times 1.5, which is 3. So if you look at this green tangent line here, the, t the line that is tangent to the point 1.5, 2.25, you'll see that if you go down 3, 1, 2, 3, there is the, we're going 1 in the x direction. So you can kind of see that it's it's not right at a tick mark, but from from a little before 1 to a little before 2, this is this is a distance of 1. This is a distance of 3 up from the x-axis. You can see it gets up to 3. So 3 over 1 is the slope of the green tangent line. The last one. When x is 0 0.6, y is 0 0.36, and the slope is 2 times 0 0.6, which is 1.2. Um, so the red line, which is tangent to this point right here, has a slope of 1.2. So um, you can see right here, from here to here is 1. And these little, uh, the little grid marks are, there's five grid marks for every one unit. So this goes up, or, so this goes up one unit plus another one-fifth, which is 1 1.2. So this is 1.2 right here. Oops, that's very difficult to see. We'll try that again. So 1.2. So it's 1.2 right there. So what this line, y equals, what this derivative function, f prime of x equals 2x, tells us is that everywhere on this parabola, the slope of the tangent line is always 2 times whatever the x value is. And that's true for every point. We did, I just did four points as an example just to show you. But every point on the parabola has that characteristic. 